citizen. Yo guys, and uh, welcome back to the uh, last stream of AC1 No Hut. We're gonna be finishing uh, the game today, and then also gonna be starting the next game in the series, which will be um, an AC game I haven't played before, which is Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. It's a game that was exclusive to the PlayStation Portable, and uh, it's one of the major reasons why a lot of people haven't. Uh, you know, play the game. But it's actually quite important story-wise because it tells the story of Altair um, after the events of AC1. Um, and it does have a, quite a cool uh, few connections to AC2 as well. And Revelations 2. So, moving forward, you know, it's gonna uh, tie in nicely with uh, other games. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to make a start on a, you know, new AC game as well. Something I haven't played before. But yeah, we have reached uh, memory block 6 in AC1, which means we are now up to the final memory. So the stream part of AC1 will be relatively short today. <coughs> I think 
it's gonna take us maybe half an hour and uh, then we can make a start on bloodlines but yeah let's go into it and play with the final uh, memory I said get up god damn it listen oh no seems your assassin friends found us what How'd you do it, Desmond? Hey, look, I don't know what you're talking about, but whatever's going on down there has got nothing to do with me. They're here for you, and I sure as shit didn't invite them. What's the situation down there? We're taking heavy fire. Can you contain it, or do I need to evacuate the prisoner? Only five or six. We've got them outnumbered. A couple of wounded, but we'll pull through. We'll get it under control. God damn you, Desmond. You couldn't leave well enough alone. I told you I had nothing to do with this. How would I even contact them? Telepathy? Come on! Doesn't matter. They'll be dead soon enough. Here, have a listen. That's been neutralized. Looks like the cavalry won't be coming. Dunno, Doc. We're freaking out a minute ago. Your little research facility not as secure as you thought it was? Worried they'll be back with more? I don't think so, Desmond. What Lucy here is trying to say is that there aren't any assassins left to come for you. We've been very busy this past year, hunting down your little enclaves, your desert communes and whatnot. I'm afraid you're on your own. Rest up, Mr. Miles. Tomorrow, we finish this. If it's base, how's it going, dude? I'm sorry, Desmond. You mentioned the desert. Do you think... They sent a team there, but the place was deserted. I don't know where your parents are, and I can't promise they're still alive. But I think they got away. Thanks. Thanks for checking. It's not as bad as it seems. What are you talking about? They just killed, literally killed, my only chance of getting out of here. And then I find out the assassins are all but destroyed, and, and Christ, I still don't know what these people are planning. But I do know they plan to kill me when they're done. I am screwed, okay? What do you want me to do? Just try and have a little faith. Have faith. Rest up, Desmond. You're gonna need the energy. Save it, mice. Welcome, mate. It's good to hear that uh, you're doing good tea base. And yeah, it's going nice. I'm um, very, very excited for the end of AC1 and also to make a start on AC Bloodlines because I haven't played uh, that game before. Aren't you tired? Get up. Even earlier than usual, Doc. I'd like to get this over with as quickly as possible. If you say so. Don't be so glum, Mr. Miles. Today is a historic day. One that will be remembered for years to come. Remembered by some of us, anyway. Yep, that is correct. We're gonna finish this uh, in a couple of minutes, actually. There's not uh, too much left. Only uh, one memory.
and you are exposed, throwing soldiers from roof. Also, thanks for the uh, host you base. Was it the Templars? Did they attack again? They walked the path. What path? What are you talking about? Towards the light. Speak sense. There is only what the Master shows us. This is the truth. You've lost your mind. You too will walk the path, or you will perish. So the Master commands. It was Al Mualim, wasn't it? What's he done to you? Praise be to the Master, for he has led us to the light. So, back in Masyaf. And as you can see, the atmosphere changed quite a lot. It's uh, gotten a lot darker. And people are now possessed by the Emperor of Eden, that I'm more mentor of the Assassin Brotherhood uses. He is the light. He is the way. Everybody lost their mind, with the exception of a few. Oh, Mualim, guide us, command us. Only speak, Master, and show us the path. The oh, will of Mualim, the Master must guide be obeyed. Us. Command us. The world will be cleansed. We will begin anew. The will of the Master must be obeyed. This ending is just so damn good. I'm already getting uh, chills, and we haven't even gotten to the best parts. If I 100 percent everything so far, um, I haven't. No, this, this run just had the no hut requirement, so I don't do anything extra if it's like out of my way. Oh shit, actually give me. Well, <laughs> to deal with distant enemies. 
I guess our sick part isn't the um the biggest either, given how little we have done. Alright, let's just try to use Fade and Blade for those insta counter kills. Make like things a bit faster too. Just uh, wait tricky at timing. Survive now. Side character in this game. Time to arrive. So it seems. Guard yourself well, friend. Al Mualim has betrayed us. Yes. Betrayed his Templar allies as well. How do you know? After we spoke, I returned to the ruins beneath Solomon's temple. Robert had kept a journal, filled its pages with revelations. What I read there broke my heart. But it also opened my eyes. You were right, Altair. All along, our master has used us. We were not meant to save the Holy Land, but deliver it to him. He must be stopped. Be careful, Malik. What he's done to the others, he'll do to us given the chance. You must stay far from him. What would you propose? My blade arm is still strong and my men remain my own. It would be a mistake not to use us. Distract these thralls, then. Assault the fortress from behind. If you can draw their attention away from me, I might reach Al Muallim. I will do as you ask, Dai. The men we face. Their minds are not their own, if you can avoid killing them. Yes. Though he has betrayed the tenets of the Creed, it does not mean we must as well. I'll do what I can. It's all I ask. Safety and peace, my friend. Your presence here will deliver us both. I love his last line. You know, he says, safety and peace. And he says, you know, your presence will deliver us both. Um, when you first get to Jerusalem and meet him as a Rafiq of uh, the city, he says uh, your presence will deprive us of both. So again, this is kind of showcasing, you know, uh, kind of like character growth. And also that they uh, grow very close and become friends, uh, ultimately, you know. And yeah, it's just great to see how... Also, you know, with I'm more Lim being the betrayer to the brotherhood you know like the mentor essentially that they don't give up on the creed you know but it rather strengthens their beliefs in that the creed is right when Malik says uh, you know though he betrayed the, the tenets it doesn't mean we have to as well it's just great writing you know especially because the creed wasn't that important to it year in the first sequence uh, at all. Oh, say the Kobe. <laughs> Good day to you. 
hate the play I love the game or something. <laughs> So, the student returns. I've never been one to run. Uh, never been one to listen, either. I still live because of it. What will I do with you? Let me go. Oh, Altair. I hear the hatred in your voice. Feel its heat. Let you go? Well, that would be unwise. Why are you doing this? I found proof. Proof of what? That nothing is true. And everything is permitted. Come. Destroy the betrayer. Send him from this world. Pretty is Kobe, like the whole atmosphere in that last bit is just fantastic. Really showing the corruption, you know, of the apple. All the people in the environment. Face me, or are you afraid? I have stood before a thousand men, all of them superior to you, and all of them dead, by my hand. I am not afraid. Prove it. What could I possibly fear? Look at the power I command. And seeing this for the first time back then was just so damn epic. Holy shit. And it still is. Words? You lied to me. 
called Robert's goal foul when all along it was yours as well. I've never been much good at sharing. You won't succeed. Others will find the strength to stand against you. Uh, what? The game just tapped out. This is why, so long as men maintain free will, there can be no peace. I killed the last man who spoke as such. Bold words, boy. But just words. Then let me go. I'll put words into action. <laughs> Tell me, master. Why did you not make me like the other assassins? Why allow me to retain my mind? Who you are and what you do are twined too tight together. To rob you of one would have deprived me of the other. And those Templars had to die. <sighs> but the truth is, I did try. In my study, when I showed you the treasure. But you are not like the others. You saw through the illusion. Illusion? That's all it's ever done. This Templar treasure, this piece of Eden, this word of God. Do you understand now? The Red Sea was never parted. Water never turned to wine. It was not the machinations of Iris that spawned the Trojan War, but this! Illusions! All of them! What you plan is no less an illusion. To force men to follow you against their will. Is it any less real than the phantoms the Saracens and Crusaders follow now? Those craven gods who retreat from this world that men might slaughter one another in their names? They live amongst an illusion already. I'm simply giving them another. One that demands less blood. At least they choose these phantoms. Or do they? Aside from the occasional convert or heretic? It isn't right. Ah, and now logic has left you. In its place, you embrace emotion. I'm disappointed. What's to be done, then? You will not follow me, and I cannot compel you. And you refuse to give up this evil scheme. It seems, then, we are at an impasse. No, we are at an end. I will miss you, Altair. You were my very best student. And this writing. Kimmy just have that. <laughs> you must really have low health, like holy shit. Blind is all you've ever been. All you'll ever be. Time is just super off. <laughs> you can use stealth kills to create a distraction. There we go. Impossible. The student does not defeat the teacher. So it seems. 
You have won then. Go and claim your prize. You held fire in your hand, old man. It should have been destroyed. Destroy the only thing capable of ending the Crusades and creating true peace? Never. Then I will. We'll see about that. I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also was a chasing after wind, for in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge, increaseth sorrow. Destroy it! Destroy it as you said you would! I... I can't. Yes, you can, Altair. But you won't. We've got it. And this moment gives me chills every time. What the hell was that? Well? We've got the map. How many? At least half a dozen. We don't need them all. We should assume some amount of decay. I can't imagine they'll all still be functioning. At least two appear to reside on land masses that no longer exist. We'll dispatch teams to each site and determine viability. We only need one, after all. What about the rest? Collect them. Let's not leave anything to chance. Last thing we need is some damn survivor making trouble for us in the new world. And the assassin? We have what we need. Kill him. Wait. You know how these things work. I doubt we'll be able to walk right in. What's your point? We might need him. His memories. I'd recommend we hold him until we have confirmation that there aren't any surprises waiting for us at the sites. This is a waste of time. You said it yourself. We shouldn't leave anything to chance. Very well. Ensure we have no further need of him, then kill him. Fine. Stop undermining my authority! I just saved your ass. Let's go. We've got a lot of work to do. Don't get too comfortable, Mr. Miles. We'll be back for you soon enough. is that Hope you love how this uh, predicted uh, future locations. Yeah, it really is a great setup for, uh, you know, being the first game. Because um, all those locations that you see on the map are, of course, like other pieces of Eden and locations of them. And that, of course, means that, you know, all of these locations could be possible future locations of AC games. And it's just a perfect setup, really, to make, like, people intrigued and theorized about, you know, okay, what could be like the next setting. That just is a great thing about AC1 in general. It's kind of like it's made people like discuss the game and kind of like, you know, um, theorize about what could be the future of Assassin's Creed and stuff. And uh, now that, uh, you know, we have synchronized with uh, IT or Star's memory, we actually obtained the gift of, that is uh, Eager Vision. And by having Eager Vision, we can now see all kinds of symbols that Subject 16, aka Clay, wrote with his blood on the floor and wards. 
and those messages also give you more hints towards you know um, what might be become and happen Puppy Vidic respect my authority <laughs> right he's like order is important what a Templar So we have all kinds of symbols here. One of them, actually a lot of them are actual glyph symbols in uh, AC2, like this one. This one you can find, it's like a barcode and you can find it on the uh, Villa Auditore in Monterey Gioni. And it says of course the 21st of December 2012, which is the date that uh, the world is supposed to, uh, you know, get um, Heavily attacked. And only a few people are supposed to survive. Hope it's always so great to go back uh, to this, especially after AC Revelations. It really is, you know. Um, yeah, it just. Also to AC3, there's also like a nice few locations. Like the other day. Uh, we actually came back to this room in one of the AC3 modern day missions, which was just fantastic. But yeah, in Revelations, there's of course also lots of uh, modern day connections to this game. Also something that looks like um, a pyramid and on top of it we have the apple which this is enough uh, I guess very logic uh, sign in terms of like you know the pyramid um, is kind of like a symbol for what the order strives for which is you know um, a very clear hierarchy with a few um, you know stand at the top and draw over the mass at the bottom and the apple kind of symbolizes the apple of Eden, of course, which uh, stands for the, uh, you know, for control of a few. So that's like a warning that uh, Clay wrote down, because it very much stands for the Templars. Okay, we're not gonna look at the war yet because I will finish the game. Um, rather, we're going to have a look into the laptops and read up on the last bits that we have uh, left. Okay, we can't go inside here. Ah, okay. I think we may have to wait for the credits to be over. Us to be able to read the uh, laptop again. Because there's still a bit more we can uh, find in the email. So we're gonna uh, run the credits and then we're gonna jump into some modern day for a few more minutes. Oh my god. It looks like. Is that blood? the hell were they keeping here before me? And what happened to him? What does it mean, I wonder? What a, what a great game. Like, seriously. After all those years, I can still only highly recommend it. The story is just timeless also, the way they present it is really, really good. But yeah, Luhat is also loads of fun. 
because the game really works around the idea of playing uh, with a change. You know, as I said, like there are like road signs in the kingdom, for instance, showing you the, the way to cities. So it literally, you know, gives you that option to navigate. And inside the cities, you know, they're not being too big. And uh, if you just pay attention to, I guess, certain buildings, it very much makes, uh, you know, orientation a lot easier. I mean, at the end, you just need to know where's north, where's west, where's east, where's south. And um, then through the dialogues, you know, they tell you, okay, go to the southwest, go to the south, go to the uh, east. Hope you're actually glad you only got into playing AC yourself only after, after several games were out. So you didn't have to wait after that cliffhanger. Yeah. You know, like, I'm glad uh, that I didn't have to wait for AC2 either. Because while I played this game when AC2 wasn't out yet, um, I didn't, like, own it myself, so I couldn't, like, play through it or anything. I just uh, seen AC1 being played and um, playing a little bit myself. Um, so uh, AC2 was, like, the first game that I actually owned myself. Out of a series. So, um, yeah, it was good, you know, that I didn't have to wait between AC1 and AC2, so to say, or at least the ending. The first game we played was AC3, so that was uh, a heck of an ending as well. The ending of AC3 is just. just uh, feuds. <laughs> I love that uh, vision that they paint, you know, of like Desmond, if he wouldn't sacrifice himself. Oh, he kind of becomes like, you know, kind of like a prophet, I guess. But in time, uh, what was meant uh, to save people is meant to kind of like enslave them and make them kind of like uh, part of, you know, something like the church again undermine people and stuff and uh, you know religion wars would happen as well and history would kind of like repeat itself like that that whole ending of AC3 and what it kind of showcases it's uh, so well done <clears throat> Yeah, it's a very tricky, tricky choice that he has. But ultimately, I think he did, um, he did the right thing. Like, it was kind of clear, you know, that when my choice uh, appeared, that uh, he had to sacrifice himself. So that's the credits. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look into the laptops. There's a bit more information we can read upon. But I need money, sir. I'm poor and sick and hungry. <laughs> Indeed. So that's, that's funny. When I go on Outbox, the music plays. It's kind of weird. Alright, so this is the... Uh, what the heck? Why are all these sounds playing? Ah, okay. So apparently, um, <laughs> I had the PlayStation Portable emulator uh, open. And... <laughs> that apparently started AC Bloodlines already. I was like, what? 
Are we done with this pissing contest? And what was funny, you know, apparently the input was uh, that I put into this game was also put into AC Bloodlines. So when I was, uh, you know, going like up, it would not play the music. And when I would go down, it would play the music. Because the import was done inside the emulator as well, apparently, at the same time. <laughs> but like, I thought it was like a bug inside this game or something. Okay. It was like an Assassin's Creed Inception or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I have an email from Warren to Lucy regarding conference room door. Uh, it isn't working. Remote access is down or something. Can you look and see what's wrong? Don't have time for this crap. Hi, Warren. The passcode has changed last night. Uh, they changed them once a week. Do you have a new passcode? No, what is it? It's 102-81943. Okay, nothing new here. And nothing new there either. Okay, so that's the entrance to the conference room. Let's have a look at uh, Vidic's laptop. Okay, this is new. From Ellen Ricken to Warren regarding additional subjects. If this kid isn't going to get us what we need, it's time to start looking elsewhere. I've CC'd David from our acquisition department. He may be able to provide you with a couple of additional test subjects should Desmond be retired. In case you need reminding, we are running out of time. This crap with the fluoride enhancement is going to put us under a lot of scrutiny. We need to launch on the 21st. If we wait any longer, we risk everything being frozen during the investigation. I have a feeling that none of our friends in DC are going to do us any favors on this one. We deal with them come election time. Also, give me what sick guys. Right. Um, we've cleaned up the mess at DIA, but I'm hearing there's some jackass baggage handler trolling news groups and not job websites with his tales of mass murder and corporate cover ups. Wait, where is he even getting this information from? Reports that the project lead killed everyone down there before our cleanup crews arrived. I still don't understand how they managed to botch that so badly. So, yeah. This is most likely talking about Sean, by the way, right here. Because Sean is uh, the one who's been, you know, going public about what Abstergo really does. Anyway, we're trying to figure out who the hell he is so we can uh, shut him up. But it's proving difficult. I'm beginning to wonder if he doesn't have help. It seems there are still a couple of those assassin bastards running loose. It only takes one. But you already knew that. Makes you wonder if a fluoride leak was internal after all. And if it was, are we dealing with a whistleblower or something worse? I'm about ready to pull the plug on your subject 17, so either get me results or get another person into that animus. Ellen. Indeed. Sean the whistleblower. That's what I love about Sean, you know, he, he doesn't care. He, he would rather want people to know the truth and have security for himself. But if it wasn't for Rebecca, he would have been dead at the point of AC2. Because Rebecca then she saved him. Uh, we have another daily headline. Mexican president promises better border security. Concerned about record numbers of illegal immigrants entering his country, 
the president of Mexico today promised to ramp up border security. The number of troops stationed along the border is expected to triple. Opponents are worried about an increase in violence between American refugees and uh, Mexican troops. Fighting between the two groups has left 300 dead at nearly 1,000 wounded over the past six months. Talks continue regarding aftermath of L11 outbreak. Nearly six years later, little progress has been made in dealing with the repercussions of what history books now refer to as the Second Plague. With nearly 96% of its population decimated over a three-month period, the continent of Africa is now virtually uh, uninhabited. Plans to divide up the continent have met with strong resistance in claims of neocolonialism. One protester had this to say, whether we are 100 or 100 million, this is still our home, and no one has a right to take it from us. So this is again, you know, a painting of the future, because with this game being released in 2007, uh, this are the daily uh, news lines of 2012. And in 2012, because of, you know, all those environmental impacts that kind of lead to 21st of December, you know, there's already like storms happening and... Uh, plagues are breaking and stuff like that and Sturco also has you know the hands in some of that um africa basically has lost you know most of its population and now Sturco and other corporations want to take over the continent for their for their causes it's really fucked up to be honest but that's what Sturco does you know <laughs> like holy shit they would draw out an entire continent just to get control of it. I really can't understand anyone who sides with the Templars. <laughs> if you if you read this stuff, of course, no. If you don't know about it, that's something different, but it is some fucked up shit. Alright, so this is an email from Lucy to uh Warren regarding subject number 16, aka Clay. I finished my report on subject 16. You should take a look when you have some time, as I believe it validates my belief that we need to be treating them with greater care. Failure to do so will only result in further breakdowns. I will summarize things for now, since I realize you're probably pretty busy. Prolonged exposure to the animals causes a bleeding effect within subject 16's genetic structure. The result was a blending of genetic and real-time memory, he became unable to distinguish his own life from those of his ancestors, as witnessed with the incident in his room. I believe this effect is very similar to certain forms of multiple personality and delusional disorders. People who claim to be experiencing past lives of the presence of other minds within their own are quite possibly experiencing a naturally occurring version of a bleeding effect. Though the specific symptoms may vary from subject to subject, the end result is the same. They lose their minds. This is what I believe happened to Subject 16. One of his ancestors seems to have been involved in an important event in the ancient Far East. The war writings have left us defy any conventional explanation, though I'm not ready to dismiss them just yet. By your request, I've asked for linguists and the historian to research them further, in case there is some significance. I will let you know if they come up uh, back to us with anything. I get you a full copy of the report so that you can review my findings when you have the time. I know this is not that, import that important to you, Warren, but it would mean a lot to me if you would just take a look and think about it. We don't need to push them so hard, we don't need to kill them. From a purely practical perspective, there is no point in destroying the subjects anyway. Once they're dead, the knowledge is lost to us forever. And we both know how dangerous that can be. Thanks for your time. Lucy. So yeah, basically she's talking about, you know, people who have like multiple personality disorders experiencing something similar to what the bleeding effect does. But we also talk about one ancestor of uh, Clay that was in the Far East that could be important. So it's kind of like a foreshadowing to a possible, you know, future setting, which we haven't gotten yet. But yeah, Lucy's really uh, 
B1 bit uh, studies with bleeding effect and what it does. It's like one of her most important research topics as well. <clears throat> Could be. So they basically worked up uh, to the end of a world date in AC3 for five years. Um, they definitely have been preparing themselves because they did know about uh, when it's uh, it should happen. And they basically try to take precautions so that they survive, but um, other parts of the world don't, and especially certain groups of people. So they try to kind of manipulate events for them to be beneficial in the case of the apocalypse. So once uh, the apocalypse is over, they can take over the world and start from scratch, essentially. Um, so yeah, they're definitely preparing for that uh, for a long time. But um, obviously, you know, this game is not, even though it came out in 2007, it's still set in 2012. So the duration of the Desmond Saga is uh, like four months or three months. It starts in like um, September or August and then it ends in December of 2012. But yeah, you can definitely be sure though that um, Abstergo has prepared for this for a long time. Or save a levy. Welcome. <laughs> and um, how are you doing today? Right, it's time to read the last bit of uh, text in this game. And then we are done. But yeah, this is the conference room of course. Something we didn't have access to until now. You're doing well. You fell over this morning and broke a plate, but you're good. Oh no. I hope you didn't uh, hurt yourself or something. And it's going very good here. We're just about to wrap up AC1. And then we're going to make a start on AC Bloodlines. So, very excited for that game as well. <laughs> Well, it's good to hear, Levy. I'm glad that you're good. And we only have one email, which is analysis. Oren. The others and I have finished reviewing the animus recordings from subjects 12 to 16. While the pieces of Eden remain our priority, we must all continue working to locate and understand the remaining artifacts. I'm sure you can understand our reasoning behind this. Although the satellite is intended to accomplish a fair portion of the work for us, we will certainly need to deal with those who are either immune to or protected from its effects. Please take a moment to look over our findings and get back to me with any feedback you may have. I will summarize uh, below. Yeah, sounds good, Levy. <laughs> and uh, enjoy your luck. Uh, one, piece of Eden number three. We plot your continued efforts to locate an alternate artifact following the loss of number two in the DIA satellite accident. We understand Subject 17 is having trouble interfacing with the animus, leading to delays. As a result, we estimate another 24 hours before your next critical update. In the meantime, we will prepare an extraction team and set them to stand by. We are relying on you to obtain the additional information we require. He knows where the other objects are, even if he doesn't realize it. You must unlock that final memory, or all of this will have been for nothing. 2. Philadelphia Project Data provided from Animal Subject 12 indicate that the ship briefly manifested in a future state for approximately 18 minutes. It is unclear whether the timeline is consistent with or parallel to our own. Although we have recorded enough data to reconstruct and repair the original artifact used in the experiment, administration has refused to move forward on the project, citing paradox concerns. Corporate policy remains in place. Any objects found to interfere with or manipulate time must be contained. Artifact will be moved to secure storage. So basically they found um, 
um, the option for people to go into the future and to see like one possible uh, vision of the future. Because subject uh, 12 um, had, you know, that state apparently for 80 minutes and could see, you know, briefly into the future. Um, it's also something that uh, the ESO mentioned, right? Because they tried to calculate the future or that future that was the most likely for them to survive, but they couldn't really find it. So their best chance was to basically store their consciousness in pieces of Eden and hope for future people in timelines to uh, manipulate events in order for them to, you know, get back to life or be reborn or take control, essentially. But yeah, they did look into the future and they tried to find the best possible outcome. And what was, uh, you know, not what seemed like the best possible outcome for them to die and to be stored in, you know, pieces of Eden. Um, it still was the best, uh, you know, vision of a future with Desmond. He talks uh, also talks about it in Black Flag in one of his, um, you know, memos that he uh, recorded. But I feel like this would be interesting, you know, kind of like having a game that plays around with the idea, with the idea of uh, being in the future. Because honestly, that would allow you to have a choice system that doesn't interfere with the law, like, at all. It wouldn't even mess with the canon at all, because... You know, it's just one possible future. And in that future, you have a chance to, to choose whatever. You know, it doesn't mean that has to happen. If you go to the past, you know, but the real story is the present, then uh, choosing something in the past is tremendous for what is in the, the present. But it's very different with the future. So my hope is that Ubisoft at some point realizes that and makes like a linear present day story with a choice system of future visions, I guess. Because that actually makes sense. And AC1 has established that that's possible. So that's like, you know, law foundation for it. So we have three uh, Tangaska incident, now believed to be the direct result of assault by assassins. Research station destroyed as was artifact. Alternate wave generation device has been located in storage, but we have insufficient data at the moment to initiate research. The risk of accident is too high. Lineage discovery and acquisition division should attempt to locate descendants of any attack survivors, either assassin or brotherhood, in order to continue research. Resurrecting this particular type of technology will aid us greatly with any holdouts following the satellite's activation. We're putting together a team to push research in this area. <clears throat> For the Grail, we are removing the Grail from our list of, of uh, objectives. There is insufficient evidence to confirm its existence. Current examination of Subject 17 indicates that aside from the Peace of Eden, all other artifacts related to Christ figure are literary devices or derived from pieces of Eden, and not actual objects. Even if objects is real, its use to us at this stage is negligible. Our resources are better used elsewhere. So of course talking about the Holy Grail of uh, Jesus Christ. It's, um, it's also funny because, um, you know, a lot of knights apparently went on a journey to find the Grail and they searched their entire life. So I guess this is kind of like, you know, a pun against uh, those nights, I guess. <laughs> and we have uh, five, the Mitchell Hedges communicators. Analysis of the object is complete. The good news is that will work. As a result, we now have a safe and secure communication channel for use after the launch. However, they are severely limited in number, and so we will be providing them only to our most essential facilities. You will obviously retain possession of a one you have. Burn, I cannot stress how important it is that you wrap things up with Subject 17 as soon as possible. We are obviously relieved that you seem to be closing in on the target memory, 
but you need to step it up. Everything we're working towards depends on you retrieving those locations. Without them, we've got nothing. May the Father of Understanding guide you to success. Ellen Rickon. And yeah, that is kind of like, you know, giving you an overview of uh, just a few things that Abstergo has their hands in. And just showcasing, you know, how much bigger the whole problem is. You know, it's not just about the Apple of Eden. This entire world of pieces of Eden and possible, you know, stuff that could happen because of them. And, you know, there are more pieces of Eden, as you can see here. There's number three, you know. There's also at least 20 more, as AC2 confirms. And obviously, you know, if we go further down the road of AC, there's like so many um, of these artifacts. And the Apple is so important in AC1 because, you know, it's not just about one piece of Eden. The Apple literally shows you like at least 20 other locations of potential piece of Eden. And that's what the Templar wanted, you know. It's what, it wasn't even about the Apple of Eden itself that much. It was about what it would provide, you know, which is uh, knowledge. Yeah, guys, this is everything that there is in AC1 to do for us. Um, of course, you know, we could hop back into the Animus and replay memories and get, like, all the citizens and flags and stuff. But uh, that's not what this uh, playthrough is about. We want to play through it with, you know, HUD, and we have managed, uh, managed to do that. Citizen. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this finishes our AC1 playthrough. We're not yet done for today, of course. Uh, there's um, another game I want to start today. And that is Assassin's Bloodlines. Um, it's a game that came out exclusively for the PlayStation Portable. And um, yeah, I'm going to be playing that on an emulator. And through that I have a chance to actually experience it this time for myself. It's uh, quite similar to AC1 in lots of ways. Um, a little bit shorter. And it kind of follows Altair's, uh, you know, Altair and what happens to him um, after the events of AC1. And it also makes a lot of connections to AC2 with the codex that he writes and also to revelations with uh, Maria uh, as well. Yeah, I've only watched uh, like the cutscenes, uh, Kobe, but uh, that's basically it. So the whole gameplay aspect is gonna be um, entirely blind for me. and exit the game and then I will quickly set everything up for um, for bloodlines or can I take a break or something just uh, uh, change the title and stuff like that <laughs> 